The Crockett Cup is one of the finest honors that any tag team can hope to accomplish in professional wrestling, and surprisingly, it managed to achieve such greatness in only three short years. However, in recent years, the tournament has seen a resurgence, leading to many fans having a renewed interest in the cup, which makes it perfect to serve as the topic of this episode, because today... Please support this channel by subscribing, and you can support it even further by signing up over on my Patreon page, just like with Ron Hawthorne and Meiji Stray. Thank you and the rest of the Patreons for all the amazing support as you keep this channel going. This episode will primarily focus on the original run of the Crockett Cup, which took place from 1986 to 1988. Although, I will be briefly talking about the revival later on at the end of the video, so stick around for that. The Jim Crockett Senior Memorial Cup Tag Team Tournament was aptly named after Jim Crockett, who was the founder of Jim Crockett Promotions. This was originally conceived as a single elimination tournament that was all to be held in one single day. Now, something that made this tournament special is that while most of the teams did come from Jim Crockett Promotions, there were a few other companies that got involved as well, such as the Universal Wrestling Federation, a company that was run by Bill Watts, although they weren't the only promotion to take part in the festivities. Its other NWA territories got in on the act, such as Central States Wrestling, the CWA, the CWF, as well as other promotions from all around the world, such as Lutte Internationale, and of course, All Japan Pro Wrestling. Now, the tournament saw some heavy hitters in terms of tag teams, featuring the likes of the Batten Twins from CSW, the Continental Wrestling Association's Bill Dundee and Buddy Landell, Championship Wrestling from Florida's The Fabulous Ones, as well as Los Guerreros. And no, not the ones you're thinking of, but rather Chavo Sr. and Hector Guerrero. They were joined by Pacific Northwest Wrestling's Bobby Jaggers and Mike Miller. This was in addition to the numerous teams from the Universal Wrestling Federation, such as the Fantastics, Sam Houston and Nelson Royal, the Italian Stallion and Coco B. Ware, DJ Peterson and Brett Wayne, Buzz Sawyer and Rick Steiner, the Sheep Herders who would eventually become the Bushwhackers in the WWF, and the team of Terry Taylor and Steve Williams. Steve Williams was originally supposed to team up with Ted DiBiase, but he was injured at the time. Now, the first round of the tournament happened in the afternoon of April 19, 1986, and it saw 3,500 people in attendance. However, subsequent rounds would all happen later on in the evening of that same day. And no surprise, the evening show fared even better as it drew almost 10,000 more ticket sales. Another difference with the evening show and one of the reasons why the format for this tournament is a bit unusual is that eight teams received a first round bye, only competing in that evening's event. These teams would include Lute Internationales, Dino Bravo and Rick Martel, and representing AJW, The Giant Baba and Tiger Mask, as well as Jim Crockett Promotions, Rock and Roll Express, Midnight Express, Horseman Arn Anderson and Horseman Tully Blanchard, The Barbarian and Baron Von Raschke, Black Bart and Jim Garvin, Manny Fernandez and Jimmy Valiant, Ronnie Garvin and Magnum TA, the team of Wahoo McDaniel and Mark Youngblood, and also the Road Warriors, Animal and Hawk. Although, the tournament wasn't all this show had going on. There were also two non-tournament matches that took place at that evening's event. One that saw Jim Duggan successfully defend his Mid-South North American Championship against Dick Slater. And the other saw NWA World Heavyweight Champion Ric Flair defend his title against Dusty Rhodes. Flair goaded Dusty into getting disqualified and therefore winning the match and retaining the title. But now, let's get back to the tournament as we enter the quarterfinals. With the matches being the Road Warriors taking on the Midnight Express, the Sheep Herders scoring off against the Fantastics, the Kolos vs. Steve Williams and Terry Taylor, and the Giant Baba and Tiger Mask going against Magnum TA and Ron Garvin. However, the Kolos and Taylor and Williams would end in a 20 minute draw, and the Sheep Herders vs. the Fantastics would result in a double DQ, meaning that both the the team of Garvin and Magnum and the Road Warriors who were victorious against their respective teams would get a bye in the semis. This would produce the finals of the tournament that saw Ronnie Garvin and Magnum TA competing against Animal and Hawk. And in the close of this epic bout, Ronnie Garvin would hurt his hand by punching Road Warrior Hawk, allowing for Road Warrior Animal to come in with a lariat and score the 1-2-3 and therefore winning the first ever Crockett Cup which also in kayfabe gave them the prize of one million dollars. And this massive kayfabe payday was the justification as to why so many teams from all over came to compete in this tournament. With the success of the first tournament, a sequel was inevitable. But this time, instead of being in the Superdome in Louisiana, 
5, this event would take place in the Baltimore Arena, and it would happen over two nights as opposed to just one. This year's teams included Arn Anderson and Kevin Sullivan. Arn was originally supposed to team up with Ole, but that was before Ole was kicked out of the Horsemen. They would compete against the team of the Armstrongs, the Barbarian and Bill Dundee, Denny Brown and Chris Champion, the Garvins, Jimmy and Ronnie, Mike Graham and Nelson Royal, Tim Horner and Mike Rotunda, the Thunderfoots, the Italian Stallion and Ricky Lee Jones, Bobby Jaggers and Rocky King, Rocky King was originally supposed to be Dutch Mantel, Steve Kern and George South, Shashka Watley and T. Joe Khan, Laser Tron and Jimmy Valiant, Wahoo McDaniel and Baron Von Raschke, NWA Florida's Tag Team Champions, The Mod Squad, The Mulkey Brothers, Ivan Koloff and Vladimir Petrov. Ivan was originally supposed to team up with Dick Murdoch, but Murdoch was suspended for 30 days after giving a brain buster to Nikita Koloff outside on the concrete floor. The format of the 1987 tournament was pretty much the same as the year prior, with the exception of it taking place over two nights. By the way, the first night drew 9,300 fans in attendance, and the second night fared even better with 13,000. Anyway, as I was saying, the second Crockett Cup continued the format from the year prior, with eight teams getting a first round bye. 1987's first round buys included the Giant Baba and Isao Takagi, Tully Blanchard and Lex Luger, Manny Fernandez and Rick Rude, the team of the Midnight Express, this time it was Bobby and Stan Lane, the Rock and Roll Express, last year's winners the Road Warriors, and the Superpowers, the team of Dusty Rhodes and Nikita Koloff. Just like last time, there were two non-tournament bouts, Ole Anderson defeating Big Bubba Rogers in a last man standing steel cage match, and Ric Flair successfully retaining his NWA World Heavyweight Championship against Barry Windham. Now, the defending cup winners did not fare as well this time around, as they were taken out in the quarterfinals by the Midnight Express, who would go on to lose to that year's winners, the Superpowers, as Dusty and Koloff would defeat Luger and Blanchard in the finals. Now, the 1988 Crockett Cup would be the last in this original run, and it wouldn't fare as well as its predecessors. With Night 1 taking place on April 22nd, 1988 in Greenville, South Carolina, they saw not even 5,000 fans in attendance, and Night 2 was on the following day but in North Carolina in the Greensboro Coliseum, and they saw only 6,300 ticket sales, meaning that both nights combined didn't even equal the sales of last year's Night 1. Oh, and I should also point out that 1988 saw a weird deviation from the format, as there was only 21 teams, leading to a whole bunch of cockamamie math to omit the last three spots. Coupled with the teams that received the first round bye, as well as the storyline that led to the winners of the tournament, this resulted in the first round being even more pointless than it usually is, so let's just focus on round two. Teams competing in the second round of the tournament were the Midnight Express, once again Bobby Eaton and Stan Lane, who defeated the Sheep Herders, Shashka Watley and Tiger Conway Jr., who came up short against the Road Warriors, the Powers of Pain, the Barbarian, and the Warlord who defeated Chris Champion and Mark Starr, the Fantastics who defeated Al Perez and Larry Zabisco, the Varsity Club who took on Ron Simmons and Steve Williams and won, as well as the team of the now reunited Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard who defeated the Italian Stallion and Barry Windham, who was originally supposed to tag with Lex Luger but turned on him right before the tournament. Although Lex would find himself a new partner, but that has to do with some of the non-tournament matches that they had at this year's event. Does he I mean the Midnight Rider beating J.J. Dillon in a bull rope bout, and Nikita Koloff defeating Ric Flair by disqualification for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship, which of course meant that Flair got to retain the title yet again. And there was also the blindfold match of Jimmy Garvin versus Kevin Sullivan, to which Jimmy was victorious. But after the match, Rick Steiner would ambush the still blindfolded Jimmy Garvin, leading to his brother Ronnie Garvin coming in to make the save, but getting injured in the process, and he had to tag up with Sting for the tournament later on. This left Sting without a tag team partner, but Luger was also Sans' teammate. This led to both men pairing up together and entering the second round of the tournament, competing against Dick Murdoch and Ivan Koloff. And the two did pretty well. So well, in fact, that they went all the way to the finals of the tournament where they took on Tully and Arn, who received a bye in the quarterfinals. But despite this advantage, Lex and Sting would come out on top, winning the last Crockett Cup, at least for the time being. Because in 2019, after the revival of the NWA under Billy Corgan, the Crockett Cup would make its return. And it was won by the team of Villain Enterprises, PCO and Brody King, who defeated the Wild Cards in order to take home the Cup. And then having to take yet another hiatus in 2020, for obvious reasons, 2022 saw the Cup come back yet again, with the Briscoe brothers taking home the trophy. Which brings us to this year and the tournament that just happened as of this recording, and it saw Trevor Murdoch and Mike Knox bringing home the Crockett Cup. 
Well, there you go, the history of the Crockett Cup. Please make sure that you're a member of the Know It All Nation by subscribing and please leave a like for this video. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to all the wonderful Patreon supporters out there who keep this channel going. Thanks again for watching and as always, Dave knows.